that paper that I published on the Big Bang Theory, it really just comes down to general relativity and quantum mechanics. The general relativity simply states that using Einstein's theory of general relativity, if the universe is uniformly expanding, then going backwards in time, it had to come down to a singularity. The quantum mechanics simply states that any kind of fermions that would be present in the initial mix, whatever that was, doesn't matter what it was, as long as you had some arbitrary number of, say, electrons and quarks, basically the stuff that makes up protons and neutrons, you had these things that were present, they have to do a quantum transition. They can't be overlapping. And that's really all that's required. Since they can't overlap, they do a quantum transition, the same thing that happens when an atom gives off a light photon. It does a quantum transition, the energy difference goes off as a photon. In this case, they transition to different orbitals, so to speak. Not quite orbitals, but you could think of it as being orbitals. They just transition to a different location and they just separate because they can't overlap. And this separation is what gives rise to what's known in cosmology as inflation. And in layman's terms, that's the Big Bang. This inflation of the universe expanding, that's what is conventionally called the Big Bang. So that's hopefully in as simple terms as I can put it. I'll go ahead and put the link back in the comments. It's uh, free to download, but it is a rather technical scientific journal article. So that's the simple version. Um, uh, I don't know what else to say. Thanks for asking. Hope you have a good day. Bye.